Fellas, if I asked you to tell me right now, who are the 10 worst babysitters in history? Do you think you could do it? What if I asked you to tell me the top 10 re- Ooh, not reading that one. What about the top 10 biggest flexes in One Piece? I actually think you could tell me that. I think a large portion of my audience could tell me that. Today, we're gonna get ourselves ready for any sort of pop quiz that we, what we might run into. Watching more Watch Mojo, the kings of top 10 content. These are the top 10 video game theories that may ruin your childhood. Huh? Is Ness Sands? Bite of 87? Five Nights? There's gotta be more. Lavender Town? Dead Pokemon? Hmm? Let's find out. Number 10, Growing Up, Super Smash Bros. series. What? <laughs> I I don't think I know this one, and I, this, I've this i been around this series for a very long time. This one, it can't be Pichu, Smash right? Brothers the Pichu Melee to Brawl thing, most right? Beloved spin -offs. This the guy kills me. The first game implies the game His enthusiasm is, is uh, really he definitely got some director's notes. Toys. Like, some this fans is have taken Keep it up. In Melee, characters can be collected as trophies. As the child has gotten older, they've taken to collecting figurines instead of action figures. In the campaign okay. for Brawl, Master Hand is controlled by a new villain, Taboo. Playing with toys as an adult is considered by some to be odd or taboo. <laughs> is Sakurai really telling you to stop playing as games? Sakurai is like, listen, I'm trying to make this as explicit as I can. Grow the f up. I want to stop making these. And then when Ultimate came out, he's like, all right, I'm not making this anymore. They don't get it. Wait a minute. Yeah, why is Master Hand bleeding? Kony, I was shocked to see Master Hand bleeding in Brawl. Yeah, he bleeds? I just assumed he was just like a sentient glove, like Glover. There's an actual hand in there. Uh, all right, so how do you extend taboo. this? I get the taboo. This you got two more has games. a sad layer to the franchise's most well-known antagonist. Number nine. Oh, that's it. All right. <laughs> I don't know if they I don't know if they thought beyond that. That's just the last game. All right I thought he was kind of spinning for a sec cuz like 64 look like beanie babies and melee looks like Action figures a little bit like they look they, it looks different. You know, I thought they were gonna go somewhere over there But oh, what is this? Oh my god, we're going uh, we're getting philosophical on this one This theory states that Sonic is not in fact a hero constantly battling dr. Eggman but rather his pets of sorts. When you think about how Sonic's levels are designed, it actually makes a bit of sense. <laughs> They're littered with obstacles only Sonic or his fellow critter friends should be able to navigate. Uh -huh. Giant loop-the-loops, countless springboards, even power-ups specifically meant for Sonic can be found throughout. That's like a, a good much more point. complicated maze for a rat in search of cheese. Sonic's <laughs> adventures are really just a big scientific study. Wait a minute! He's kind of spinning! I, 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 wait a minute! This one actually, I'm kind of feeling this one. Unironically, Sonic just lives inside this shit. This is a Sonic course. He makes Sonic think, you know, he lets him believe in the idea that he's helping people, he's saving these earth. Because, like, why else is all this stuff there? This isn't a part of the world. This is not a lived-in place. Why is this road going through the middle of town? It's called game design? Okay, yeah, but I'm saying if Sonic is supposed to be real and open world, I'm kind of feeling this one's a little bit more... Because it's all linear, you know what I mean? The open world frontiers or whatever, that's its own thing. But the fact that this is like a level created by someone, why couldn't it just be Robotnik? Who else would be doing this? And don't say it's like a road. What roads have this? You gotta go up a, a fucking... It, this... I would only see this in the army. I have never had to do this in my daily commute. Show the highway level from Sonic Adventure 2. No city would have a road like that. Wait, is that the road that has a loop in it? You're telling me this is not a hamster wheel. Oh my god. What are these roads? <laughs> you know, I never looked at this in the context of an actual road. This is a like 70 degree decline. There, you you will not let, you're not, it doesn't matter how smooth the transition is. You will not survive. And then it goes back, what the fuck? Honestly, these theories are kind of spinning so far, except for the first one. The second one is good though. Post-apocalyptic games. Yeah, this is the one where the, the Ink won, right? The Delfino, the, it's, the, it's the Mario universe, but the Squids won. This is literally just canon, is it? Splatoon is Are we a sure? team-based shooter that people of all ages can enjoy. But as the series has grown more popular, some have picked up on some hints about when 
and where it's set, oh. leading to a pretty It's literally theory. a game. It's not Splatoon subtle. Splatoon is oh, okay. set on a post-apocalyptic Earth, with humans having died out thousands of years ago from a climate crisis. Oh. There are small nods to post-apocalyptic Earth throughout, oh, where? like the original Sunken Scroll and the upside-down Eiffel Tower in Splatoon 3's trailer. Oh, what? I didn't even know that was the Eiffel Tower. I, I'm so stupid. I didn't look at that and say, oh my god, that's the Eiffel Tower. I was like, oh, that's like the big building in Midgar. Swear to god, I was like, oh, it's like Midgar. You gotta fight the corporation. The planet is bleeding. Can't you hear it cry out? I, I, I thought it was like a big building under construction or something. Coney, they worship a giant fax machine. Wait, really? <laughs> I've never See, I've never played any Splatoon, so any lore or anything, I don't know. The villain of 3 is a giant bear who wants to turn all the squid people back into mammals because he's racist. What? There's a bear? Is it this guy? <laughs> Mr. Grizz? A 12,000-year-old grizzly bear. Get the fuck out of my face with this. Here's the fax machine lore. It's Splatfest themes. Wait, really? They get their Splatfest themes through the fax machine? That's so neat. Dude, Splatoon is cool as hell. They worship online flame wars. <laughs> Dude, that's amazing. Splatoon world building, I, everything I've heard about it is fascinating. Same with like s the soundtrack is excellent. I just have zero interest in playing it. I don't want to play it at all. <laughs> it's the same with, uh, with Kirby. I love the way Kirby looks. I love the way it sounds. I just don't want to play it. I like this a lot. Play it, Coney. It's so fun. Maybe I'll do Splatoon 4. Maybe. But 3 already came and went. Number 6. Make a wish. <laughs> Does everybody already know what this is? Does everybody have an idea? I, d I think I know what this is. This alone is one of the funniest still images I could ever think of. This is fantastic. This is why there haven't been any more games. It was terminal. According to this theory, the entire thing <laughs> is Max Make-A-Wish dream. His size is due to muscular dystrophy, though he still dreams of being a boxing champion. I think there are just some 5'2 people. <laughs> I think some people are just 5'2. Why does that have to be the case? He just called short people diseased. Yeah. Wait, how tall is little Mac? He's just like 5'2, 5'6? Like, uh, what? Oh, he's small. Wait a minute. 107 pounds, though? Dude, that's little. What BMI is that? <laughs> Hold on. So little Mac is 5'7, which is what, 67 inches? And about 107 pounds. He cannot be created. We cannot make it. And this is why there hasn't been another punch out game. He's 17 and the make a wish age cutoff is 18. His <laughs> opponents are merely performers. Bro, I don't care how much a kid wants a wish. You can't put him into the ring with a fucking gorilla. He's going to die sooner. He's getting his ass beat too. Look at little. Oh my God. Be glad he just has bruises. Wait, Doc Lewis. He's a doctor. Number one, okay. Pokey People, Pokemon series. Oh, is this like a Nurse Joy thing? There are enough disturbing Pokemon theories to make up their own list, which we might do. But the one that really makes our skin crawl concerns marriage between humans and Pokemon. In the Japanese release of Diamond and Pearl, players could find a book that spoke of human Pokemon relations long ago. That was in the game. They removed it in the Switch remakes. They were just hugging. They were hugging. Is it hugging? It says Mary. They used the word marriage. Okay. Oh, I get it. All Pokemon fans are a little different now. The Vaporeon or the Lopunny or all that shit. The Gardevoir was like one thing, but like I didn't know the game was encouraging it. This is your game? This is what you're. All right, man. Though some players came to an unsettling conclusion. Since certain Pokemon like Jinx and Hitmochan take on humanoid forms and even appear to wear clothes, these must be the evolutionary results of those marriages. Oh my god, they are people. I can't look at him the same. It, I, he's a person with, a, with an outfit now. That's weird. That's weird. That's so weird. That's so weird. That's so weird. That's so weird. Just use this. Human-like egg group. <laughs> Human-like egg. Human shape egg group. 
<laughs> one of the 15 egg groups. <laughs> what? They know what they're doing. Electabuzz is a person? What the fuck? Well, uh, I, I did not know many of those theories, but one thing I would like to know, who are the top 10 biggest game show cheaters ever? Who got on national TV and got away with it? I'm curious. Number nine. The Flip Flop Cheater. <laughs> In the Price is Right's game of Flip Flop, contestants oh, hell must no. they alter the flip first flop? two numbers, the last two numbers, or all four numbers to correctly guess the price. A man named Breton is told how to play the game, and he even gestures to the crowd to help him out. But rather than flipping or flopping, Breton presses the button that reveals the correct answer. <laughs> oh yeah, I have seen this. No! <laughs> to be honest, we don't know if this is cheating or just an honest mistake. <laughs> Either way, it resulted in one heck of a payout. In an incredible act of charity, Barker gives Breton the prize in the end. I'm going to give you the prize. Get Why? Why did he do that? Honestly, though, I would think the same thing. If I was excited up there and I was like amped up and ready to go, I would probably hit the I would like lock it in with the button. But wait a minute. Wait, no. If he locked it in by hitting the button, then he lost. Bob's a nice guy. I'm gonna give you the prize. The prize Get was a crappy stage. keyboard. All right, let Still, him have Bob it. Bob Barker panic yelling no and walking off stage <laughs> has to be one of the funniest moments on the show. <laughs> Next time I'm chosen, I'm just pressing the button. Yeah, if I ever get on prices right, I'm immediately hitting the button. What are you gonna do, Bob? He's already pressing it. Give me the car. Give me the car, Bob. Number eight, Khalid El Katatani. We don't know if Khalid El Katatani plays poker, but if he doesn't, then he totally should. Regardless, he walked away with the top prize of $100,000. And how did he do it? By apparently reading the body language of host and question asker Eddie McGuire. He observed McGuire's subtle tell whenever the correct answer was read aloud and went with it. Really? You've won 100000 That's crazy. Imagine being that host. If you're the host and the guy is like, yeah, I didn't know any of that. I just found out because your host has a tell. He would get fired on the spot. That's unbelievable. Professional LA Noir player. I swear I didn't kill that. That game is so fun. I swear I didn't kill that woman. You gotta believe me. That game, that game is so fucking funny. I love that game. They were like, we we can we have all of these facial features and all this mapping to make sure that we can have the most subtle delivered performances ever. As he later told the Again, media, not I didn't play the game, I played the man. That poor guy. Dude, that host lost his job. He had to. That's gotta hurt so bad. <laughs> oh my god. Number four, Herb Stemple. Here's a scandal that's actually in-house. Between 56 and 58. I think, I think we've heard about this, but I don't remember it. NBC aired a game show called 21, which saw two contestants duking it out in general knowledge trivia. Following a disastrous first episode. Bro, what is this? I, I love, like, the combative nature of these TV sets. The la the only other time that I think I've ever seen this kind of setup is on Win Ben Stein's Money. Did anybody, any of you guys remember this show? They put you in the Ben Stein cage. <laughs> they put you in this, this booth. My dad loved this shit. I love this shit. I grew up on nothing but Comedy Central. It was just like SNL reruns and this. That was like really it. Cram? Dude! I don't remember anything about the show except for the name, but now that you said it, oh my god, I've watched this. I don't remember this at all, but I've watched it. Oh my god. Producer Dan Enright decided to rig the show and hired contestant Herb Stemple to act as an underdog champion. Stemple was the provided with both the this? questions and answers beforehand and racked up quote-unquote winnings of nearly $70,000. Damn, that must have been like $8 million back then. He was eventually, you know? quote unquote, defeated by a man named Charles Van Doren, and 21 became highly choreographed after its first broadcast. Number three, Adriana Abenia. What is that a microphone? <laughs> it looks like a like a punching bag. While appearing as a celebrity guest, Abenia secretly held her iPhone under the table and attempted to use the music identifying app Shazam to shoot her <laughs> way through a segment. However, she received a text at an inopportune time, and this was noticed by the host. What? He called her out, and Abenia playfully acknowledged that yes, that was her phone, and yes, she was indeed cheating. So there's that. Number two. We're back to Mr. Stemple. 
<laughs> Wait, they were both cheating? Wait a minute. <laughs> By the I, I want to go back to this. This is so fucked up. It's crazy to me that no, if you put any amount of anything on any kind of competition, any amount of money, and it, it could even be for pride, people will cheat. I used to watch a show called Nick Arcade on stream, which is like an old show where people play video games and played on Nickelodeon. And I run predictions. Will the red team or the, or the yellow team win? And suspiciously, somehow, every time I ran a prediction, like 80% of the vote would go to the winning team. And I was like, hmm, that's weird. Wonder why. And I guess people were looking up the episodes, which is crazy to me that people would do that for a couple Coney coins. They don't even do anything. It's crazy. I can't turn on predictions for anything. And that's why I like Salty Bet. It's the last real fun we get to have. But Coney, winning is awesome. I, I guess... We return to the scandal of 21 with Charles All right, Van what Dorn, did he do? What the man did he who do? finally dethroned rigged champion Herb Stemple in front of 15 million viewers. <laughs> Wait, was he cheating? And that's how they found out he was cheating is because he beat the cheater. And the only way you beat the cheater is by cheating. Van Doren's reign on 21 made him a national celebrity and even appeared on the cover of Time. Surely that well, has to be Well, as you it. probably won't be very shocked to learn, Van Dorn was in on the whole scam too. Following his dive, Herb Stemple became a whistleblower and exposed the fraudulent nature of not only 21, but many other game shows of the time. <laughs> what? The case went all the way to Congress, and former rivals Stemple and Van Doren teamed up to expose the deception. Congress subsequently made a law expressly prohibiting producer intervention and predetermined game show winners. What? There's a movie out of this? That's a, that's an incredible story. Holy shit, dude. That's an amazing story. Number one, Charles Ingram. Oh, his wife was sick that day. After studying the tape, they one. concluded that Ingram had been cheating with the help of a man named Tequan Wittuck and his own wife, Diana. They were both in the audience and reportedly coughed when the correct answer was read. It's up to you. I can't <laughs> help you, Charles. It's your lifeline gone, but... <laughs> All three were convicted of deception and given suspended prison sentences. The Ingrams were also prison? forced to pay 115,000 pounds in fines and defense costs. Jeez. Why did the wife not just play? I assume she had her phone or something, right? Do they not have their phones or anything? Wait. In my country, there used to be a game show where the host would make children deaf with headphones and ask yes or no questions, and then laugh at them when they lost everything by answering wrong the last question. <laughs> Holy shit! What country is that? They're laughing? I've had enough of game shows. We need to get back to the video games, am I right? Are you gamers as bored as I am? Game show? <sighs> I'm asleep. I want to see the top 10 video game reveals that caused a massive backlash. Oh, I hate it when they make the gamers mad. These devs are always so lazy and greedy. Stop making me mad. Make the game I want. Number 10, DMC Devil May Yo, the best one. Let's go. This game is so good, and I'm not kidding. People think I'm being a contrarian. People think I'm kidding. I'm, I'm really not. I really liked this game. I will rip open his chest with my bare hands and feast beating heart at least it had something to say like this game has got a story about media manipulation and propaganda and how media can control your mind and play what are the fucking the actual devil may cry games about he just likes pizza and says jackpot it's stupid and he has a, a girl that drives around in a big van that can go underground it's stupid teaches you that god is bad boring there's a lot of jrpgs where you kill god it's about family. I, I got a plenty of movies for that. And they all star Vin Diesel. Ninja Theory sought to make its own mark on the series. <laughs> Part of that mark was redesigning the lead character Dante. By I, this game is actually fun. This game was fun. Coney be like DMC Dante. He's just like me. Hell yeah. He's so cool. Look at him. However, when the game did release, naysayers were silenced. Gameplay was intense, adding Damn. enough new features while retaining what everyone loved. Did you hear that? Some even came around on the character changes within the context of the story. Naysayers were silenced. Zip it. Hush. I don't think that's true, by the way. I don't think naysayers were silenced. I think they were louder after the game came out. Number seven, The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. Bro, were you guys alive for this? Be honest. This was a big deal. 
people were mad about this. I've always wanted to play this game, but everybody tells me I shouldn't because the, the sailing sections suck. Maybe I'll try it. I loved uh, Link's Awakening, but I don't really like 2D Zeldas. I tried Link to the Past and it just kind of got bored and lost. And I kind of liked Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. I didn't love them. I could see why they were influential and I would love them if I played them back then, but uh, like playing them older, I didn't, you know, I wasn't really a fan. In 2000, Nintendo was gearing up for the launch of the GameCube. Yeah, going During crazy. the Space World Expo, it showed off footage of Link fighting Ganondorf to showcase the console's potential. Oh, yeah. Many thought they were okay, they did a look show the that. Installment. But the development team found this style derivative. It explored new art styles, eventually uh. landing on a cartoon aesthetic with cell shaded graphics. Opinion on Link Between Worlds? Link Between Who? All right, listen, I'm only going to say this one time. Don't you ever speak to me about a 3DS game. I don't play games in public. I've never owned a 3DS. I'm an adult. Don't you ever speak to me about a 3DS game. No, the Switch is... No, the Switch is... The Switch is awesome. The Switch is awesome and cool. And the Steam Deck is different because right now I'm playing Aggressive Inline for the PS2 and Pikmin 2. That one's cool too. But 3DS has for pussy little babies. Steam Deck is the most embarrassing thing someone can hold in public. Really? <laughs> The most embarrassing thing? Watching Cody stream on public is the worst. Okay, what's the funniest answer to the most embarrassing thing you can hold in public? You, you, you do it. Jackbox this. Milk, a lamp, a fish, fleshlight, uranium, body pillow of a lot. See, none of these are... See, it's harder than you think. See? Pokemon cards? James Corden's hand. See, now there's... There's a good chatter. See? GameCube controller is pretty funny. GameCube controller is pretty funny. Number four, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. Dude, I thought this game looked cool as hell. I'll set up direct fire on that enemy destroyer. Oh, I thought this looked cool as shit, dude. Once active, I don't play the game, so I don't know. But I thought it looked cool. The Call of Duty series began to move towards future ones. God, like, honestly, God bless Call of Duty for trying something different. Gamers was like, no, we hate this. Go back. And they went back to fucking World War II. While the fan base wasn't too happy about Come the on, man. Shit, Activision tried no, to I want to fight Nazis practice, again. Like, you already fought Nazis. Remap, but that didn't matter like, when the 13 times. Was it confirmed I want to do it again, bro. And plot, and fans I want to storm force. Normandy they again. Fight space fire. Nazis. You had zombie Nazis. Many preferred the more How many Nazis do you need? Attack. And by June of 2021, the reveal trailer had amassed more than 3.95 million dislikes on YouTube. Dude, if I worked on this game, I would not, I would be punching the air that people hated this. I would be so furious that I tried something new and different and distinct and people hated it. And I, I hey, maybe I'm talking out of my ass because I'm not a, uh, I'm not a Call of Duty guy. Maybe I'm not in touch with the fan base. They said they wanted something different. Is that true? Really? I just... I, I really I really want to commend devs that do new shit when it's good. <laughs> I shouldn't just say that straight up. Even like Pikmin Bloom, I thought that was like, oh, that's kind of cute, you know? I, I would like a new game, but you know, it's kind of neat. Or you know, like if a Devil May Cry game came out and it wasn't exactly the same, and maybe it had more oh, grounded, realistic themes, and maybe messages about propaganda and the role of media in our modern society, that would be kind of neat. Maybe a new take on the protagonist that made him a little bit cooler, a little bit less, you know, weirdo pizza guy. That'd be kind of neat. I think I would like that. Number three, hatred. Yep. That's the number three. I'm gonna go ahead and get right past this. Send hatred back to the bin. Uh, skip that one. Hatred. <laughs> there it is. Number one, Diablo. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> dude. As somebody who doesn't give a shit about Blizzard or Diablo. This was phenomenal to watch. Like Command & Conquer Rivals, Diablo Immortal got immediate this was so hate funny. for being a free-to-play mobile entry in a predominantly PC series. Fans were starved for a new entry with Diablo <laughs> 3 dead. having been released in 2012. However, player displeasure grew immensely and quickly thanks to Blizzard's own reaction to fan reception. Uh, we don't have any plans at the moment to do a uh, PC. Oh. Honestly, from their perspective, I can kind of see why I can understand people being like, I can understand their thought. Like if you're developing a Diablo down the line anyway, you just want to put something out for phone as like a band-aid, like, you know, I. When Immortal was finally released in 2022, they just shouldn't have made it such a big deal. Like for extremely predatory microtransactions. However, the negative press may not even bother Blizzard. Immortal became one of the studio's biggest launches, reaching 30 million downloads in just under two months. 
Ain't that just the way? These gamers ain't got no backbone. They'd be playing the games, bro. I Somebody said, why show it at E3? But it's like, I mean, back then they thought that was the wave, right? Phones. They thought phones were the play. Their asses did have phones, actually. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> they did have phones. What was your favorite part? Comment below. Like, subscribe. I'll see you next time. Goodbye, YouTube. Goodbye. Goodbye. See you next time. Goodbye. I'll find really good ones next time. I promise. Don't worry. They put out like six a day. Also, this is like the 40th one we've done on this channel. If you like these, you should watch more. Check out the playlist. Bye, YouTube. Goodbye.